Welcome to Wacky Wednesdays, where everyone has a chance to show off their car mods. And here's this week's winner. Hey YouTube, hey Scotty fans, my name's Philip. This is my 1999 BMW 323 IS. It's got 321,000 miles and I've had it for almost five years. I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of living with a 20 year old German car. I'm gonna go through the history and also some of the maintenance that I've done on this car. And naturally, I've got plenty of quirks and features to show you. So the E36 had a production year from 1992 to 1999. This particular one is the last year. So you see tons of these driving around in California especially. People love them as daily drivers. However, where they've got the most recent attention is in the recreational activity known as drifting. These cars are no stranger to motorsports. They have a rich history in DTM, the German Touring Car Championship. It's got near 50-50 weight distribution, fully independent rear suspension. So unfortunately we can't include any clips of DTM cars in action because of copyright issues. However, here's a photo of our friend's car, which is actually a DTM replica built from the ground up. You've got rear seats you can actually use. It's more well balanced. You've got better suspension geometry, a better setup, which works better in motorsports and drifting. Now this video wasn't meant to be a 240 roast session, but take that as you will. I just want to tell you how great this model was. It was featured in Car and Driver's Best 10 Cars every year was produced. The car has taken me from point A to point B year after year reliably, but of course there have been some things I've needed to replace, none of which have actually left me stranded on the side of the road, thankfully. Most recently, this summer, I actually did the head gasket on this vehicle. A shop would have quoted me about four grand to do the job. With my friend here, the cameraman, he helped me out. Parts, parts and labor only were about $350. Labor was free, of course, but all the gaskets and associated parts that were replaced ran us about that much and took us about two weeks to complete the job. Cylinder head had to come off, of course. Intake manifold and the nest of vacuum hoses, basically, most of the engine minus the block had to come out. Got the infamous BMW cooling system, which is perhaps the worst thing about these cars. They're all made of plastic. It gets brittle with age, and they're prone to dozens of leaks if not addressed prematurely. For me, I've already been through two water pumps. You can make a joke there if you'd like. If you're willing to do the DIY maintenance on these cars, you'll save a ton of money. I would never really recommend that anyone buy a German car if they're not doing the work themselves, unless they've got deep pockets and they can pay someone to do the work. But the best part about owning this is just doing the work yourself. There's so much you can learn about cars that you know you wouldn't be able to learn from buying a newer Corolla. Not enough things would go wrong for you to learn about how to work on cars. That pretty much covers the stuff in the engine bay that I've done. I've also replaced the, the drive shaft because the U-joint was actually bad when I bought the car. It remained undiagnosed and untreated for several years and I had the nastiest clunking coming from there whenever I accelerated and it's amazing it didn't grenade the transmission or the differential but honestly these cars can take quite a beating despite what people say. Maybe that's also why they're so well liked for drifters. You know whether you put them into a wall or you blow the engine, they're like Legos, you know, you slap on new body panels, new engine parts. Now that we've covered some of the big ticket items, we'll kind of do a walk around of the car and I'll show you some of the things I've done to it. Other than those things I've replaced, it's really just been basic maintenance throughout the years. Uh, you know, some cosmetic items, we got the blacked out kidney grills, which I like, I kind of like the murdered outlook. Uh, we've got the fog lights, eBay special, and it's wearing the M3 Contours, 17 inch, Sumitomo HTR Z3 tires. 
in the front, and we've got Federal SS 595s in the back. It's a 17 inch square setup, 17 by 7 and a half. Uh, you can see here, got the lovely trim piece missing, because we all know how great German plastics are. Got a small tail light setup, it's also eBay special. Um, exhaust is stock. Got the trunk in here, pretty spacious. Got to finish it off with some nice pink emblems. Start off as more of a joke, but now I just run them on the whole car because I think it's funny and, you know, maybe some guys will leave me a love note after they see the pink emblems thinking, you know, a chick that's into cars is driving this. Well, they're in for a surprise. This car is 321,000 miles. Obviously, it's not going to drive like a car that has 90,000. What's important is that the powertrain is still in one piece and it gets me to my destination every day reliably. This model, it's got a pretty Spartan interior. Luxury cars back then are certainly not what they, what they are today. The seats are leather. They're nice, well padded. It's got manual adjustments for the seats. It's got vinyl door cards and speakers that are okay. Obviously, they don't even compare to the speakers in a lot of economy cars today, but it's still good enough for you to listen to your music. Let me just leave you with a couple of tips for longevity for any car, but particularly a older German car. The thing is you need to drive them. There's definitely a divide between the purists who do everything by the book and would rather see the car low mileage and cared for than seeing a beat to shit example that gets driven every day and gets used for its intended purpose. These cars were meant to be driven and I think that's really the best way you can care for them. Just drive them, do the routine maintenance, change out the fluids. That's the one way you'll get these cars to 300k miles plus. It's really not that difficult for them to reach these types of mileage just obviously there's Achilles heels in every type of car but addressing those and preferably addressing those yourself will save you both a lot of money and a lot of headaches thanks for watching and thanks Scotty for featuring me on your channel week's video and to have your car mod shown on my channel here check this out so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell